Hello, welcome back to Algebra. The title of this lesson is called Conic Sections, Circles Part 1. So I title it this, this way because we're going to be learning about circles for the next uh, five or six lessons, really diving into the details. But I also want you to keep in mind that it's part of the family of, of, uh, of shapes that we call conic sections. We've already talked about the fact that we have circles, that's a conic section, we have ellipses, we have parabolas, and we have hyperbolas. We have four conic sections which can be obtained from taking cones, just a regular cone, and slicing them in different ways. We get these different shapes called the conic sections. So we're going to talk about probably the most important one, the circle, the most beautiful shape. It's, all, it's always been said throughout history is a circle because it goes back and it joins back to its starting point. All right, so what we're going to do in this lesson is I'm going to give you the equation of a circle right here in the beginning. We're going to do a few quick examples to show you how to graph or how to sketch the shape of a circle. But really, in the beginning here, you won't understand why that's the equation of a circle, right? You're not going to really understand that, but the, the next part of this lesson, right after we get through with the first examples, we're going to really dive in and show why this equation I'm about to write on the board actually does describe the shape of a circle. Because I want you to understand what you're doing. I don't want you to just blindly trust me. I want you to understand, hey, there's a, there's a logical way I can understand what this equation really is. So let's first write this equation uh, down. Again, one of the most important equations. So here we have what we call a circle. And you all know in general what a circle is. It has a central point and, and all of the points on the circle are an equal distance away, which we call the radius, from the central point. So what we say is if we have a center of the circle at the point h comma k, because this circle we're going to draw, it can be in the center of the xy plane, or we can move the circle anywhere we want, you know, left, right, up, down in the xy plane. So it has to have some center. We call it hk. These are just placeholders. The center of the circle can be 1 comma 2. The center of the circle can be negative 19 comma 7. The circle can be centered at 0, 0, or any other value you can come up with. So it has a center at h comma k and a radius which we denote by r, which is obvious because it's the radius, right? So what is the equation of the circle? And this is the famous equation of a circle. In general, a circle has this form. All circles look like this. x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared. Now I'm going to let that sink in for a little second, even though you won't really understand why it's the case, but I'm going to, I'm going to circle it on the board because we're going to leave it up there. Now in general, we're saying the center is at h comma k. So we're saying the center of the circle can be anywhere that we want it to be. But for now, let's just pretend the circle is centered at the origin, right? The circle is centered at the origin. If the center then is at 0 comma 0, then this is 0 and this is 0. And then the equ entire equation boils down to x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. So the equation of a circle is quite beautiful, really, when you think about it. You have the x variable squared plus the y variable squared is equal to whatever the radius is squared. Now, you don't understand yet why this actually does describe a circle. In fact, this equation looks really weird compared to any equation or function that we have drawn in the past, right? Because usually when we graph things, we put y, the variable y, on one side of the equal sign and everything else on the other side. So we have, for instance, y equals mx plus b or, you know, 3x plus 4 for a line. Or for a parabola, we'll say y equals 16x squared. Or for any other polynomial, y is equal to 2x squared plus 3x plus 4. Always y is on one side of the equal sign and everything else is on the other side of the equal sign, which lets us, you know, plot the thing. But this is different because we have the x variable and the y variable, variable, which are both squared, of course we have the h and the k, we'll talk about that later, but they're both squared and they're both on one side of the equal sign, so it's not set up like the other equations you've ever plotted before, and that's because conic sections are just a little bit different. All of them are like that. The equation of a circle is set up this way. It looks a little different. The equation of an ellipse looks very, very different than other equations you've plotted or looked at before. The equation of hyperbolas and parabolas also look different. So you're just going to have to get used to the idea that the conic section equations look a little bit different than what you've graphed in the past. And that's because they're defined in a different way. So in fact, one thing I want you to keep in the back of your mind is one reason why circles look so different, the equation of a circle looks different, is it turns out a circle is not a function. And I know you might say, well, if it's not a function, why do we care? Well, lots of things are important that aren't functions, and this is one of the most important ones. A circle is not a function, because if you think about a circle being 
you know, circular figure, it fails that vertical line test. Remember we said a long time ago with functions that in order for it to be a function, there needs to be a one-to-one -one correspondence between the x value and the y value. You know, so that means it, it passes that vertical line test uh, if, if it's a function. Now with a circle, you know, of course you're gonna always cut through two halves of the circle no matter how you do the vertical line test, so it's not a function. Does it mean a circle is not important? Of course not. Circles are one of the most important things. All right, so let's uh, jump into some examples to show you how to use this equation really quickly, and then we're gonna derive it. I'm gonna show you where it comes from. All right, so let's take the most simple circle I can probably think of. Here's the simplest one in existence. x squared plus y squared is equal to one. This is an equation of a circle. You might say, how does he know it's an equation of a circle? Well, the way you know is because it follows this form. You have the x variable squared plus the y variable squared equals something squared. Yes, I know it's a one, but when you think about it, one is really one squared. So the right hand side is something squared, right? And you might say, well, wait a minute, it's different than this. Well, not really. If the center is h comma k, then we know from this that I can write this you know, I, I didn't give it to you this way, but I could write it as h minus zero squared, I'm sorry, x minus zero squared, plus y minus zero squared is equal to one squared. So I'm not gonna give it to you like that on a test. I'm gonna give it to you like this. And I'm gonna say, hey, what is the center and what is the radius of that circle? And in your mind, you need to say, well, I can, that's really a shift, a, a shift of the center by zero units and a shift uh, of the center in the y direction by zero units. And so what this really tells me is the center of the circle is located at zero comma zero and the radius is equal to one. Why is it one? Because the right hand side is r squared. Uh, the radius is what we call r, but the right hand side is r squared. So really to find the radius, you take the square root of one. And so the radius is equal to one. So the bottom line for a circle you read the center directly out of how the x and y variables are shifted, and the radius is read directly off the right-hand side. You take the square root of whatever's on the right-hand side. Because remember, the right-hand side is the radius squared. So to read the radius out, I take the square root to get back the radius that I have. So this particular circle, for instance, if I wanted to draw it or sketch it, I'm not gonna sketch every one of these things, but we just put it off in a little xy plane here. The center is located at zero comma zero. That means the center is right in the center of the coordinate system and the radius is one. Now the radius of a circle means all of the points on the circle are the distance, a radius, one radius unit, however far the radius is, away from the center. So the way to sketch it is, if this is one and this is one and this is negative one and this is negative one, then the circle must go through all these points because the radius is one. So if I'm gonna sketch it, I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna go down through here, I'm gonna go up through here, and I'm gonna go up through here. Is that a perfect circle? No, you can tell it's lopsided the way I've drawn it here because I didn't do my tick marks perfectly, but you get the idea when you sketch it. You're saying one unit away, one unit away, one unit away, one unit away. The center is read directly out, the radius is read by taking the square root of the right-hand side. I do not expect you to understand yet why this equation actually gives you this shape. We haven't talked about that yet. For now, I want you to trust me and let's do a couple of quick little examples. And then when we get through those, I will show you exactly why this equation actually produces this shape. All right, so for now, let's, let's just kind of plow ahead and let's take a look at another circle. Let's say I give you another circle, x minus one quantity squared plus y minus one quantity squared is equal to 25. Now, first you ask yourself, does it follow the form of what I have here? And the answer is yes, x minus some number squared, y minus some number squared, radius squared. So the way you do this is you read the center directly out of the equation. So the center of this uh, circle is located at one comma one, and the radius is equal to whatever's on the right-hand side, you take the square root of it, 25. So the radius is equal to five. Notice I picked these, this number nicely so I could take the square root of it. Uh, there, but you don't have to have a nice number. If I put 10 on the right-hand side, then I would, the radius would be the square root of 10. The square root of 10 is an ugly number, but it's a number. If I, whatever number's on the right, you take the square root of it. If, if you don't have a nice perfect square, it's okay. You just have a radius that's some decimal units long. I mean, of course you can have a circle with a 1.395 uh, centimeter radius. Of course that can happen. But in this case, I'm choosing nice numbers. So notice what we're saying, if the center is at h comma k, it's x minus h, 
y minus k. So I just read the center directly off. This minus business comes directly from the idea of shifting a function. Now we've talked about shifted functions at great length in the past, and I don't want to get into an entire lesson on why this shifted version this, with these minus signs produces a shift to the right. I've done that many, many times in the past. But probably the easiest way to do it is to compare this equation, x squared plus y squared is one, with this equation, x minus one squared, y minus one squared, and you can, in your mind, you can replace this with a one. Basically, this equation is shifted to the right one unit and up one unit. Because if I put a one in here, and I put a one in here, I'm gonna get a zero squared and a zero squared. If I put a zero here, I'm gonna have a zero squared and a zero squared. So the bottom line is the only way I can get these equations to kind of like look similar to one another is if I shift every x value to the right one unit because one minus one is zero and every y value up one unit because one minus one is zero. So when you're comparing the basic equation of a circle, this is the basic equation of a circle, the equivalent shifted version would look something like this. X minus, let's say two quantity squared plus y minus two quantity squared is equal to one. So I'm claiming that this equation is exactly the same shape as this one, it has the same radius, but this one is shifted to the right two units and up two units. And the reason, or I don't wanna get into a bunch of lecturing on it, but the reason that it's that way, with a minus sign shifting to the right and a minus sign shifting up, is because when you compare, these equations are exactly the same, but if I want to, for instance, make this quantity zero here, the only way I can do it is to feed x values in here two units bigger than I'm feeding them in here, because two minus two is zero. So if I want these to be, I mean, we know it's the same shape, we know they have the same radius, but I wanna figure out how to make them kind of equivalent. How do I go from here to here? And the only way I can do that is to feed x values in that are two units bigger than that, two minus two giving me zero, zero being here, and also the same thing with y. If I envision feeding a y value of zero in here, the only way I can do it is to feed a y unit into this equation two units bigger. So it's the same exact shape, it's just shifted over to the right and up uh, two units, over to the right two units and up two units, because the only way that I can feed the same values as I'm feeding into the base equation is to feed two units bigger into the shifted version. That's why it becomes shifted over to the right and shifted up there. All right, so anyway, getting back to our problem, it shifted over to the right and up one. So the center is one, one, the radius is five. Now we're not gonna do this for every single problem, but let's go ahead and sketch this one as well. So uh, here is X, Y plane, right? And the center of this thing is at one comma one. So here is one comma one, we're gonna put a dot right here. Now the center is no longer at the origin. The center is shifted over to the right, up one. But the radius is five, so how do we do that? Well, you have to be five units away. So one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna put a little tick mark here. One, two, three, four, five. I'm put a little tick mark here. I need to go to the left five units. One, two, three, four, five. I'll put a little tick mark here. And then I need to go down. One, two, three, four, five. I need to put a tick mark here. I put these little tick marks here because that helps me guide my pencil uh, whenever I am drawing the circle. And of course, I'm not an, a good artist, so it's not gonna be a good drawing, but you see the idea here. When you look here at the, at the uh, my pencil is a little bit too long, but you can see the radius is five units, a constant five units away. So basically you put your center down, you count five units down, five units up, five units to the right, five units to the left, put a little tick mark, and then you can of course see that this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six units away. This is negative one, negative two, negative three. This is negative four units away and so on. I can count up and count down as well. All right, we're gonna get a little more practice with the circle business before we move on. What if we have the circle x minus two plus y squared is equal to 16? Now, a lot of students look at a circle like this and say, well, it doesn't really look like a circle. It's, uh, sorry, I missed a squared there. It's, um, it looks different. This one shifted and this one isn't, okay. Well, that's fine. If you want to, in your mind, transform this, that's fine too. You don't have to do this, but a lot of times what I'll tell people to do is I say, write it like this. Instead of y squared, write it as y minus zero squared. Now suddenly it mirrors exactly what the form of the circle should be. If you were gonna read the center of the circle off of this equation, what would the center be? The center would be, there's a shift to the right two units. That means that the center is two units to the right, but the shift up or down is really zero, so it's just two comma zero. That's the center. 
right? The radius is whatever's on the right-hand side, you take the square root of it because what's on the right-hand side of this equation is the radius squared. So that means the radius is square root of 16, which is four, okay? Again, we're not gonna do sketching of a million of these things, uh, but we will do a little bit here. So the center here being at two comma zero means the center is one, two units over comma zero. It means it's right on the line right there. And the, and the radius is four units. So I have one, two, three, four units to the right. One, two, three, four units up. I'm gonna put a little tick mark there because that's where my radius is gonna be. One, two, three, four tick marks to the left. And one, two, three, four tick marks directly below. Now you see I have a tick mark uh, all through here that I'm gonna try to go through. Is it perfect? No, but that's mostly what you're trying to do. Two comma zero, radius of four, you can see it's a constant distance away from the center of this guy. So the base equation of a circle is just x squared plus y squared is r squared. Whatever you're doing inside the parentheses, shifting the thing left or right, up or down, is just determining where the new center is. Again, because when I shift the thing, I have to feed units, uh, I have to feed x and y values two units bigger and y value two units bigger in order to give me the same shape as my original base equation. All right. Now, I want to do a couple of more, and I think I want to try to squeeze them in over here because I need to save the last two boards for the probably the most important part of this lesson here. Let's go and take a look at x squared plus y squared is equal to 100. What would be, I'm not gonna graph this one, but what is the center and what is the uh, radius here? So, you know, as I said, uh, you know, you can, uh, it's a, a, almost exactly the same thing as what we've done up here, x minus zero squared, you can write it as, y minus zero squared, you can write it as, but you know, you don't have to do that. That's something that I tell people to do in the beginning, but really when you don't see any shift here, then you know right away that the center is just located at zero comma zero, right? And the radius is just whatever's on the right-hand side, but you have to take the square root of it, so the radius is 10 units. So if I wanted to sketch this, I would draw an xy plane, I would put the center of the circle right in the, in the origin, right at zero, zero, and I would count 10 units to the right, 10 units up, 10 units to the left, and I would basically draw my circle, which would be a pretty large circle. All right, so that's just one more little example. I wanna do one more and have a little space to graph it um, because it's a little more important. What if you have x plus two quantity squared plus y minus one quantity squared is equal to nine? Now this one looks a little different because the y minus one is written just like it is here, y minus something, but the x here, there's no minus sign, so a lot of times students will get confused. Okay, when you're shifting functions, and I covered all of this when we did the original shifting functions less than a long time ago. When you shift things, when you shift any function, it could be a circle, could be a line, could be a parabola, could be cubic, could be a square root, anything, any graph, you can shift anywhere you want on the xy plane. When the x variable is shifted with a minus sign, it means it's shifted in the positive x direction. When the y variable has a minus sign shift, it's shifted in the positive y direction. But when you have plus signs, it's shifted in the opposite direction. Why? Because you can write this, um, you can write this x plus two, you can write it as x minus a minus two, if you want to, you don't have to. I'm just trying to give you different ways to think about it. This is perfectly exactly the same as this. So this is a shift to the right, but negative two units. So I'm shifting to the right, but oh, hold on a second. I'm actually shifting to the, to the left because I'm shifting negative two units to the right. So it's a little bit of a convoluted way to think about it, but the way to really think about it is that when you see a plus sign, you actually go the opposite direction, which is left. When you see a minus sign, you go to the right. So the center of this guy, the center is really located at negative two comma positive one, like this. And the radius is the square root of nine, which is three, like this, okay? And I will try to do a little quick sketch here. Let's see if we can we can fit it in right here. We're gonna do it. We're gonna do it right here. We're gonna go and say, okay, we have an x y plane. Where is the center? Negative two comma one. So negative two for x. Here's negative one. Negative two for x. One for y. So there's one for y. So the the center is no longer on the right-hand side of the plane, it's on the left-hand side of the plane. The radius is a three, so you have to count up one, two, three units from there, put a tick mark. One, two, three units left from there. One, 
two, three units down from there, and one, two, three units from there. So I'm putting little tick marks there. So there's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now I know these tick marks are not perfect because they're not evenly spaced and I did a little sloppy job with that, but this is basically what you're looking for. The reason it looks a little bit oblong is because these tick marks are a little bit wider than those, but there's, there's a, a radius of one, two, three to the left, one, two, three to the right. It's just that I've compressed things a little bit, but that's more or less how you, how you graph this thing. So now what we've done is I've introduced the equation of a circle and you know how to use it. But so far, you don't know why it works. You don't know why. I mean, when we learn how to graph lines, we make a table of values. And we, we show that that's the graph of a line. When we do graph parabolas, initially, we do a table of values. And I show you that that's how you graph a parabola. But here for the circle business, I just told you, trust me, this is the equation of a circle. But you don't actually know why it's the equation of a circle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and explore that in more detail. It's extremely important when you get into higher math to know where things come from. Otherwise, you're not doing anything other than just, you know, repeating what you've been taught. So what we want to do is I want to do a circle. I want to show a circle with center at 0, 0, and a radius of 4. So what I want to do is draw this, and I want to figure out what the equation of that circle must be. Now, we already know what it must be because I already showed you what the equation of a circle is, but let's pretend we have no idea what an equation of a circle is. And I want to draw this and I want to understand where everything comes from. So what we do is we say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and draw an xy plane. I'm gonna try to draw it large so that we can see everything. So there's x, here's y. And the center of this circle is at zero, zero, right there. And the radius is four. That means that there must be one, two, three, four. It must be a little crossing there. One, two, three, four, crossing there. One, two, three, four, crossing there. One, two, three, four, crossing there. So the circle must look something like this. It goes down, and then it goes way down here, and it goes way over here, and goes way up. Is that perfect? No, it's not perfect, but that, that's basically what the circle centered at zero radius of four looks like. Now what we want to do is we want to recognize that the blue line here is the set of all points that make up that thing that we call a circle. There must be some kind of an equation that will predict, for lack of a better word, all the points that lie on the blue curve. If we can't figure out what the equation is of what's on the blue curve, then we failed. So we need to figure out what the equation is that describes what the blue curve is. Now how do we do that? Well, let's first go over here and say, well, let me switch colors actually. Uh, up here, we're going to say that the points on this curve, uh, there's infinite points, of course, on this blue curve, but I'm just going to pick one of them right here, and I'm going to say it's point P, because that makes sense, point P, right? And this point P has a value x comma y. Now we're saying that the blue curve really is the set of all points P, right? So there's a point P here, another point P here, another point P here. There's an infinite number of points all the way around, and every one of those points have a different value x comma y, right? This one might be, I don't know, this is one, two, three comma one, two point eight or something. So this might be three comma two point eight, whatever. You can see that as you go around the circle, the different values of p are gonna all be different, but there should be an equation to predict what those points are, all right? So what we're gonna do to figure this out is the following. We wanna, we want, we know, let me put it this way, that between the center and all of the points on here, the critical thing is the distance here is what we call the radius. The distance here is what we call the radius, and we know that it's equal to four units. That's the critical thing that lets us figure out the equation of a circle, because we know that if the point is here, the distance must be four units. If the point is over here, the distance must also be four units. If the distance is here, four units, distance here, four units. No matter where I point the thing, the distance from the center must be point four units. Now remember, I'm saying the distance from the center must be four units. The distance from the center must be four units. Remember, we learned something called the distance formula. We know how to find distances. Anytime we have two points in the xy plane, we can just stick it right into the distance formula and calculate the distance. And we're saying that all of these points have to be four units from the center. So we can then write down the equation by using that. Now remember, the distance formula comes directly from the Pythagorean theorem which we've discussed a long time ago, all right? So if you think about it, if this is the point x, I'm sorry, p, which is x comma y, then there must be some x value, right? 
here, uh, for corresponding for that value of p. And there must be some y value. This is the x comma y. x, you read it from this axis, and y, you read it from this axis, right? And the center, don't forget, is located at 0 comma 0. That's what a center is. It's located at 0 comma 0. So how can we write down what we need to figure out? We know the distance from 0 comma 0 to whatever point we care about, x comma y, is equal to 4. But for this particular circle, 4 units. The distance from 0 to whatever point, but I drew the point here, but I could have drawn the point here or here or here. It doesn't matter. Whatever the point is, the distance between the center and that is 4 units. So how do we write that down? The way we're going to write that down is called the distance formula. What is the distance between 0, 0 and xy? Now I know we don't know what xy is. That's the whole point. We don't know what pxy is. But we know that there's some point has an x value and it has some y value. So if, if we were going to find the distance between here and here, we would do it exactly as we always do. Remember, the distance formula is what? It's x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y2 minus y1 quantity squared. We take the square root of that whole thing, right? That's what the distance formula is. The only thing about it is we know what one of the points is, but the other point, we don't really know what it is. We just know it has some x and some y value. So then to find the distance between them, going from here, subtracting here, the distance would be whatever x is minus 0 quantity squared plus whatever y is minus 0. This is the distance between those two points. Make sure you understand that. Yes, I don't know what x and y is. Of course I don't know what they are. It could be, you know, uh, 1, 2, this would be 2 point something, you know, whatever, 2 point something. Of course I don't know what it is, but I know it's x, y. So I take x minus the x value y minus the y value. I stick it into the distance formula. And I know that this must be equal to a distance of four units, of four units. Why? Because the radius of the circle is four units. I know what the distance is. So I calculate the distance between the points and I set it equal to four because that's the radius of the circle I drew. Now, how do I do anything with this equation? I have this uh, large square root, but I'm gonna not deal with that right now. Let's go ahead and just rewrite this. This is just x minus 0 squared, so we can write it as x squared. This is y minus 0 squared. We can write it as this squared. We still have a square root is equal to 4. Now, in order to get rid of this square root on the left, what do I do? I take the square of both sides, right? So I say x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. I have a square root, but what I can do is I can raise the left-hand side to the power of 2, and since it's an equation, I can do the same thing to the right-hand side. I can do anything I want to both sides of the equation. Now on the left-hand side, the square kind of cancels with the square root, so all you have is x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 squared, which is 16. This is the equation of the circle. This is exactly what we would expect based on the problems that we did before, right? We said a center of circle always has a center h comma k and a radius of 4. The center is located at whatever the shift is here, but in this case, the circle that we drew on the board didn't have any shift at all. So we expect it to be x squared plus y squared is equal to something, and it has to be whatever the radius is squared. The radius is 4, you square it, you get 16. So this is the equation of the circle uh, with a radius centered at 0 comma 0 um, with a radius of 4, and you can generalize this. So let's generalize this because we drew the circle as a radius of four, but we know if we make the circle bigger or smaller, the only thing that's really gonna change is you know, the distance formula. We're gonna change what's on the right-hand side. So even if you make it a generic R, all you're saying is that a circle has the general form of x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. That's all we did on the right-hand side. We squared the radius. So if the radius were 10, we would square it and we would get 100 on the right. If the uh, radius were 3, we would square it and we would get 9 on the right. So this is the equation of a circle centered at 0, 0 with a radius of r, whatever that radius is. So that's how we go from, here's a, the special shape called a circle, to what is the equation of that. Now, it's not like a traditional equation that you've learned before because the y is not by itself on the left-hand side. It, 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 and notice it's not a function either because if it's, it fails the vertical line test. I'm cutting through two values of the relation here every time I cut through like this. So 
back to what is a function back we learned a long time ago, it's not a function. But that's okay, it doesn't mean it's not important. Circles are one of the most important shapes in all of nature. I mean, really, and I mean that seriously. When you get to calculus, you're using circles all the time. But it's not a function, that's okay. So if you get a trick question on a test, is a, is a circle a function? No, it's not a function. But it's an extremely important relation, which is what we would call it, or equation. Now this, I went from a circle centered at the origin with a radius of four, and we figured out what the equation of the circle must be, so we can generalize this is why the equation of a circle looks like this. But what if the circle is not centered at zero, zero? Let's quickly do that. If you can understand that, which I know that all of you can, then the, um, the next one is not hard at all. Let's shift. Let's shift the circle um, two units right and uh, three units down. So what we want to do is go through the whole exercise again, but with the circle in a slightly different location. And we want to show that the thing that you get out of it is actually this business. We want to show that that describes a circle that's shifted anywhere other than the origin. All right, so we're going to draw a xy plane. So we can always have a picture. I always recommend that. So here is our xy plane, like this. Now we're saying basically that the center of this circle is uh, two units to the right and three units down. So here's two units to the right, one, two, three units down. That means the center of the circle is here. So we say the center is, uh, sorry, I can't spell center. We say the center is at two comma negative three, right? And we say the radius is the same as the radius before. We're not changing anything. We're saying the radius is still four. Everything's the same, um, but we're just shifting the thing here. So how do we draw Sorry, not r equals r. We're saying r is equal to 4. Same as before. We're just shifting the thing. So how do we draw this? Well, if the radius is 4, it's 1, 2, 3, 4. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to put a little tick mark there. Then 1, 2, 3, 4. We'll put a little tick mark there. And then 1, 2, then 3, 4. We'll put a little tick mark here. So this should describe this circle. Something like this. Now, before we go on, I want you to agree with me that this circle is exactly the same as this one. I mean, I know I drew it, maybe it's, the tick marks are a little different, but you see the idea. This one's centered at the origin, radius of four. All I'm doing is shifting it over two units, three units down. It was originally here, over two units, three units down, but the circle is the same. I mean, the shape of the thing is the same, it's just located in a different place. So how would I go about doing that? How would I go about figuring out what happens here? Well, we do the same kind of thing. We pick a point on the circle. Let's call it this one. Let's call it point P. It's got X comma Y. The center here is now at two comma negative three. That's what the center of the circle is, right? But we also know that the radius to, from this point to this point is four units, same as before, four units. Exactly the same thing. So we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to figure out what is the distance using the distance formula from this point to this point. And no matter where you are in the circle, the distance must be four units. That's what the circle is. That, that's what defines the shape of, of the points that we call the circle. So if we're going to put that distance formula in there, we're going to do the same thing. It's x2 minus x1 quantity squared plus y uh, 2 minus y1 quantity squared. This is the distance between any two points in the xy plane. But this point has an x-coordinate of, we're just calling it x, this thing has an x-coordinate now of 2, so we have to subtract 2. This thing has a, a y-coordinate of y, but this thing has a y-coordinate of negative 3, so we do have to subtract it, but you have a negative 3 here, and that's squared. And we take the square root. We're saying this distance is what we have written down as the distance formula between those two points. And we're saying that it's a radius of four units away. So we have to put that the distance between them is equal to four. Now let's crank through this and see what we get. We're going to have x minus two quantity squared. Then we're going to have, uh, what, this becomes y plus three quantity squared. We have a square root here. And this is equal to four. Now the same exact sort of thing can happen. In order to get rid of the square root, we can just square both sides. So to make it clear, I'm going to say x minus 2 uh, quantity squared plus y plus 3 quantity squared. I'm going to take the square root and I'm going to have 4. 
Now, in order to make it clear, what I'm saying is it's an equation. I can do what I want to both sides. I'm going to square the left-hand side, so then I also have to square the right-hand side. So immediately, the square cancels with the square root right here. And so what you're going to have left over is just what's underneath. x minus 2 quantity squared plus y plus 3 quantity squared is equal to 16. We're saying this is the equation of a circle that has a radius of 4, meaning you take the square root of the right-hand side, but located somewhere other than 0, 0. 2 units to the right, 3 units down. Let's go back and look and see if that makes sense. Center is located h, k, radius, and of course I can't spell radius, sorry about that, uh, radius of r. Um, the shift of the y in the y direction is what do we have? What do we pull pull out of it? Uh, two units to the right in the x direction, and because there's a plus sign, it's actually the opposite direction, three units down. That's exactly what we would predict from here. It's two units to the right. This was a plus sign, so it was three units down. So we can then generalize exactly as we did before that really the equation of a circle is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared is equal to whatever the radius is, because we just picked a circle here. So this is the general circle, right? And all circles will look like that. You put the equation, the equation of a circle down on your paper, you put the center in, you put the radius in, you square the thing, and, that, and that's what it is. That's what the equation of a circle is. It comes directly from the distance from formula, knowing that the distance between the center to any point on the circle has to be the same for all the points, and so we just crank through it. So, make sure you understand this. You should understand the general idea of what a circle is. You should understand where it comes from. We're not done, not by a long shot. We need to sketch circles. We need to do more complicated problems. We need to do all kinds of things. We have a lot to do, but this is the most important part of it all. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue conquering conic sections and specifically circles.